Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be looking at the first example of how to solve a linear differential equation. So here we have a differential equation. Uh, you see the first thing you always ask yourself is what is your dependent and what is your independent variable? So in this case we've got y as our dependent variable. So y is the dependent and x is your independent. And this is important because it helps you decide what type of linear differential equation you're working with. If you look at the rest of the equation, what you've got here is a mixture of dependent and independent variables. So you can't use direct integration. You have one, two, three terms, but you can actually convert this into two terms. So you see you have a common factor x and x, so you can in fact change this into a separable differential equation. But for the purposes of today's video, I'm going to use the linear differential equation method. And this is also linear because you see here your dependent variable is to the power 1, and that makes the equation linear as well. So you'll find sometimes you have more than one method that you can use to solve a differential equation. You usually do what's easiest. But, like I said, today we're looking at linear differential equations. Now, if you recall, in our previous video, the one that gave the overview of linear differential equations, we put down the steps in order to solve a differential equation. And you see there, step number one is to convert the differential equation into standard form. So, if you look at the equation here, it is actually already in standard form. Because here, you can see your P is 4x and Q is 2x. And that also satisfies the definition of P and Q. Because all you've got in there are your independent variables. Remember, you can't have any dependent variables. Constants are fine, but not the dependent variable. So what we want to do here is we want to solve this differential equation. And that means that you want to eventually get an expression where y is equal to something. Okay, that's where we want to get to. Now the method I'm going to show today is really a proof of how we get to the final step formula in our presentation. So it's, I'm going to show you how we get to this formula here, over there. Right? In the future you don't have to do all of those steps. So let's see how we go. Okay. So, you recall also I spoke about the integrating factor, and we're going to be using the integrating factor in order to solve. So the integrating factor is this defined as e to the power of the integral of p dx. Okay? And I am going to use that equation, and I am going to multiply. I am going to multiply by f. Right? And I'm going to say f dy dx plus, and I'm not going to say 4x, I'm going to say p is equal to q. Right? Because we know that p is 4x and q is 2x. Oh, and I left out the f's. Let's put those f's in because when you multiply an equation by that, you have to multiply each of the terms in that equation. At this stage, what I want to show you is that this expression here is in fact the same thing as the derivative of y times f. Right? This is what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to keep this in red, and I'm going to say, if I have a function y times f, and I take the 
the derivative of z. This is a product, right? So when you differentiate it, you need to use your product rule. And the product rule says you're going to have the derivative of the first function, which is dy dx, times the second function, plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. Right? That's your product rule. Now, if you look at this expression that I've got, you'll notice that the first term here is the same as that term there. And if we continue, dx, I'm going to leave that, plus y, and I'm saying that I want to find the derivative of f, which in this case is e to the power of the integral p dx. Okay. Now, I want to concentrate on the derivative of f. Right. And I'm going to keep that one. Let's leave that one in blue. The derivative dx e to the integral of p dx. Okay. Now, this expression in the bracket is, in fact, what we call a compound function. So there's two parts to it. There is the base e, and then you've got your power. So it's similar to, for example, if you had e to the power 2x. What would be the derivative of that? How would you do it? You'd use chain rule, right? So the derivative of e to the power 2x would be 2e to the 2x. Now you're going to do a similar thing here. So the derivative is going to be the first part of the function is the base e. And anything with the base e, if you find that derivative, it just stays the same. So it's going to be e integral p dx multiplied by the derivative of the power. So we're going to look at the derivative of the power, which in this case is p dx. Okay. Then, integral of p dx, the derivative is the inverse of the integral, which means that this expression is just going to be p. Okay. And your first term now is just the same as f. So that means that if we look at this here, that over there is just the same thing as f times p. And that means that dy dx of yf is going to be equal to dy dx times f plus y times f p. Okay? Now, if we compare this to our equation that we got up here, that one there, all right? Let me rewrite it for you. So you see now, if we compare dy dx of y f which is equal to this expression here, and we compare it to the equation that we started with, you'll see that the first part matches, that matches that, and also your second part matches. So this piece matches that piece there. So what that means is that the left-hand side of this equation can in fact be written as the derivative of y times f. And that is equal to f cubed. We want, because we want to solve the differential equation, we want to have y on its own. We don't want anything else next to it. Okay? 
So how do we do that? How do you get rid of this derivative? Well, what you can do is just take the integral of both sides. Because the integral and the derivative are inverses of one another. So that means we'll have yf is equal to the integral of fq dx. And this is the equation that I showed you in the third step of how to solve the differential equation. So all you would now do is substitute in the values of q and f into this equation. So that means that if we go back, we recall that our p was 4x and our q was 2x. So it means that f is going to be e to the integral of 4x dx and that is going to be e to the power 2x squared plus some constant value. And if I now substitute f and q into this equation here, so I've got y f is equal to the integral of f q dx, it means we've got e to the power 2x squared plus a constant is equal to the integral of e to the 2x squared plus c times 2x dx. And now all we need to do is we need to integrate on our right hand side. What you'll see also that this e to the power 2x squared plus c is the same as writing it like that, right? Because that's just exponential rules. Which means it is the same on our right hand side. Then we can say e to the c and we can take the constant out of the integral because I mean, there's no variable in there so you don't have to integrate. Right? And you can in fact just cancel those off right? because they're common. And that also means that when you find your integrating factor up here, your integrating factor up here, you don't actually have to include that C because it's going to cancel off anyway. So you'll find that's what they do in a lot of exercise books as well. That's why they don't add that integrating factor because in fact it's not really necessary at this point. So now we've got the expression e y e 2x squared integral of 2x times e to the 2x squared dx and then this is just integration so we've got y e 2x squared equals 2 plus some and that would be our solution so you can make y the subject in the formula of the formula if you need to but it's not really necessary it depends on what you want to do with the equation but those are basically the steps of how to solve a linear differential equation like i said that proof part in the middle you don't actually have to use i just showed it to you so you know where the equations come from in the next example you'll see i don't use that at all i just skip straight to step three of the steps in order to solve the differential equation so we did number one convert the given differential equation into standard form find the integrating factor and then we did a bit of a proof and then the final step three now, as I said in the next example, I'm not going to do the proof part in between two and three. I'm just going to skip straight to number three and substitute into that equation. So I will see you in the next video with another example. Bye.